Welcome. So today I'm going to take you through some code that I wrote that will um, download Major League Baseball StatCast data using the Pi Baseball module in Python. So um, I'm going to provide this code as well as the resulting files it creates um, on a GitHub link. So you can find those in the description if you're interested. The first step will be to import the modules the function will need. So I'll do that now. And then um, I will run this function on 2015 as an example. So the three parameters this function takes are going to be the year in the last two digits, um, the start date in month-day format, and then an end date in month-day format. And it's going to download all of the available StatCast data for that range, one month at a time. Uh, the reason we do this one month at a time is trying to do all of the data for a whole year at once usually results in an error or timeout. And breaking it down month by month helps to do this successfully. You may still get the timeout, but every time that's happened for me, if I just rerun the code, it's worked the next try. Um, all right, so I'm not going to go through the details of the function. Um, it basically just converts the parameters we give it to start and end ranges, uh, and then goes through month by month to download the data, um, and then concatenates uh, that at the end to um, return data frame for the year 2015 in our case. Um, so this data is collected at the pitch level. So every row in this resulting data frame will be for a pitch. So they'll be very large data frames. Um, and then 2015 is pretty straightforward, but for other years, we had some different um, kind of situations I had to account for. Um, so for 2016, there were spring and regular season games on April 3rd, which was opening day. So I had to filter for only the um, games we want to keep, which were the regular season. So that's what this code right here does, um, is it will uh, filter only for the three um, games that took place that day, getting rid of the spring data. Then for 2019, we had a Japan series um, that started early. So for March 20th and March 21st, we only want to keep data for Seattle and Oakland, which was the Japan series. And then um, for the dates in between that Japan series and the rest of the regular season, which began March 28th, uh, we want to drop those as well. Um, so after doing that, we should be all set with um, 2019 and then for 2024, there's a similar situation with the Japan series. So I've kind of taken care of all these scenarios. Um, so if you want to uncomment any of this code, um, you'll be able to download any and all of the years of StatCast data that you want. Uh, and of course, StatCast began in 2015 and ended in, well, um, we go through 2024, which is the latest available right now. Um, so that will be everything that you can possibly have in terms of pitch-by-pitch -pitch stat cast data. All right, it looks like um, it actually finished. So it's a bit quicker than they even thought. Um, and what I'm going to do once this outputs is then, rather than run that again for things I've already downloaded, um, I'm just going to then use this function I wrote that imports each of these written out CSV files um, back into the environment. So that way you don't have to do this every time or do these all at once if you want to download um, the StatCast data. So each year I've saved that as a CSV 
And now I want to read those back in. And actually, during this read-in process, um, I'm not reading in all the columns. I've subset certain columns that I want to keep because I think they're most useful. Um, so I'll go through those now. There's a description of them on Baseball Savant um, that I've linked to. Uh, if you want to find more information on what each column is uh, and perhaps change the columns you'd like to keep. Um, but the batter column is going to be the batter's uh, ID. Um, the game year and game date and home team are self-explanatory. Um, the stand column describes whether the batter is left or right-handed. And then the P throws column is the same for the pitcher. Uh, the pitch speed, or sorry, pitch type. Uh, and then effective speed. Uh, the effective speed is the pitch speed factor and then release point. And then we also have the X and Y locations of the pitches across this home plate here um, with these uh, PFX columns, as well as the zone, which is if you, um, the zone is divided up into different quadrants um, inside and out of the zone and which, which um, region the pitch fell into uh, is classified by the zone. The description describes the plate appearance, sorry, the pitch. Um, and then we have some ball and play level metrics, uh, launch speed, launch angle, the X and Y coordinates of the batted ball in the field of play, uh, the infield fielding alignment, so whether or not there's a shift or, or standard alignment, and then the events column describes the ball and play result. All right, so um, now that I've ran that, we can see okay, um, that it's a large data frame, 6.7 million lines. Um, so trying to open and edit anything in Excel is a bad idea. Um, I'm just going to go straight ahead and filter for uh, our hit and play string in the, the description column uh, to filter for balls in play. And then um, print out some information as well as the first few header lines uh, just to show you what this is like. So these are the um, different columns I already described. The batter, again, is going to be the uh, Major League Baseball's official um, ID number for each player. Um, and then we can see looking at the header, um, header information for this file. Um, yeah. It's basically as I've described. Um, everything seems to have worked correctly. And we can write this out um, so that we have this every time we want to use it um, for further analysis with further scripts. Um, and we don't have to go through this process again. So that's the basic idea. Um, and again, I will link to this code and this file uh, on a GitHub page, so uh, you can find that in the description if you're interested.